Hank the Octopus may have been a grump at times, but there is no way that Dory would have been able to successfully navigate the Marine Life Institute of Morro Bay, California without him. His attitude is one of the reasons that many fans fell in love with Hank. He was a very straightforward character with his goals and often wasn't afraid to share his opinion on Dory's actions. The two met almost immediately after Dory ended up in the Marine Life Institute and didn't really get off on the right foot. But the two quickly became acquainted when Hank noticed that Dory had a tag on her fin that would have been his ticket to a different life even further from the ocean, which he feared so much. Thus, the two agreed that Hank would help Dory in exchange for his ticket out of there. Through their first interaction, however, we learned an interesting thing about Hank. Unlike most octopuses, he only has seven arms. And yes, we mean octopuses. Turns out the correct plural form of octopus is octopuses, not octopi. Though the word octopi has become quite popular, it's grammatically incorrect. And while we're on the subject, another thing to mention is that octopuses don't have tentacles. Nope, their appendages are called arms. Tentacles are for squids, like squidward tentacles. The marine biologists out there watching this can thank me later. Now, like we said before, Hank only has seven out of his eight arms left, and this is what makes him different from most octopuses, and actually the reason why he ended up in the Marine Life Institute to begin with. It was supposedly for rehabilitation purposes. You see, it isn't uncommon for wild octopuses to be missing an arm or two due to varying factors, but it still wouldn't be considered normal per se. Now, there are many reasons octopuses lose an arm in the wild, and as it would turn out using subtle clues from the movie, Hank actually has three possible ways that he could have lost his arm. And the last one is pretty disturbing. Now, before we go any further, if you're a fan of all things Disney and Pixar, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to ensure you don't miss any of our magical uploads. The first possible reason that Hank is a septipus, as Dory put it, was actually because of stress, and a lot of it. One of the sadder known facts about octopuses is that much like humans, they can feel the burden of stress. Unlike some animals who live their life off of survival instincts and instincts alone, the octopus is actually a really intelligent creature and often aware of everything around them. This can lead them into states that almost appear like depression. Their habits begin to change and they begin to almost become manic in a self-destructive kind of way. It's weird to think of an octopus as acting manic, but it's true. It could be something as simple as a dwindling food source to not feeling safe in its environment. And what ends up happening is the octopus will do the octopus equivalent of freaking out and making very impulsive decisions in an attempt to regain its comfort level. Sometimes this even results in the highly dramatic act of eating itself, beginning with its arms. There are some people who think that this might have been what caused Hank to lose one of his arms. I mean, you can tell the poor guy is stressed out to the core, always fearing going back to the ocean. Whether it be by the ocean or the creatures that he surrounds himself with, he's almost always in a constant state of fear. And some think that in a dramatic response to going back to the ocean, he ate one of his arms to lengthen his stay at the Marine Life Institute. The second reason Hank could have lost his arm is due to a possible yet accidental amputation. In nature, accidental amputations usually come from either trash left by humans, humans themselves, or other marine predators. In Hank's case, if he lost one of his arms due to some sort of accident, there's a good chance that the incident occurred at the Marine Life Institute itself, rather than out in the open water. Now, evidence that supports this theory is hinted at heavily when we see how excited he gets upon noticing Dory's tag that she had on her fin. He knew it was his ticket to Cleveland. But then the question becomes, why wouldn't he let the humans near him so that he could get a possible tag for Cleveland? Some argue that it's because the humans were actually looking for him to release him back to the ocean, which he clearly didn't want. But as this theory goes, he may have been avoiding them because he had developed a fear of the humans, possibly because he didn't want to be caught and tagged by them for some reason. Perhaps that reason is because the last time he was supposedly saved by humans, it didn't go so well, and he ended up accidentally losing one of his limbs in the process. The most likely scenario would probably be if he had been tagged before. You know, when they picked him up for the first time and brought him to the Institute. And when they went to remove the tag, something happened and the blade slipped and accidentally clipped his arm. If you notice, Hank also didn't like children too much. And you can probably see why after watching the scene with the touching pool. Maybe there was another reason he disliked the younger generation. There is a chance that a younger employee or even the child of an employee had too much access to the animals and an incident occurred that could have led to Hank's misfortune. All of which could be possible due to the way that Hank reacts to the humans around him, even though he appears to move around quite comfortably. Although this theory does hold some ground, 
We aren't 100% convinced of it. Frank seemed to fear the ocean rather than the humans themselves, but it's a theory worth noting on the list. In fact, the last theory may be the most convincing one, as it supports the reason why he is terrified of the ocean and desperate to get to Cleveland. But fair warning, we're about to get a little PG-13, as it is the most unsettling one out there. For those of you who may not know, a male octopus has its reproductive organ located at the end of one of its eight arms. This organ is known as a ligula, and the arm that it can be found on often looks different from the other seven. And sometimes when two octopuses get together to spend some personal time with one another, things don't always go as planned, and the male will end up losing one of his arms, or at least part of one. Now, throughout the whole time we've known Hank, he has made it abundantly clear that he has had a horrible experience in the ocean which has led him to never wanting to go back there. There's some speculation surrounding the fact that this may be over a heartbreak. Some are speculating that Hank found himself head over tentacles in love with another, and through a sad course of events, that love was only reciprocated briefly, basically just long enough for the mating ritual to be completed, and then the other octopus just left, even though Hank lost part of his arm during the process. This left Hank not only in need of medical attention, but also heartbroken. His last memory of the ocean would have been of the octopus he loved hurting and then abandoning him. How sad is that? I wouldn't want to go back either. Hank was many people's favorite character that they added into Finding Dory, and it's clear to see why. His personality makes him both likable and relatable at the same time. However, his intro didn't come without some sadness when we learned that he had lost an arm in some way, shape, or form. And though these theories added a bit of darkness to the Finding Nemo world, they definitely add a bit of insight to the parts of the ocean that we don't see. But what do you guys think? How do you think Hank lost one of his arms? Be sure to let us know in the comments. That's all, Disney fans. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments, and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.